Hey everybody, it is another beautiful day in New York and I am back with my friend Chelsea today. We are going to talk about how to change our relationship with money. You know how we talked about what emotional spending is and why we do it? Now she's gonna offer some tools and tips and tricks and ways to get back on track. So let's go meet up with her, see what she's got to say. Thank you so much for making time again. Thank you for having me again, I love if, it. If you don't know who this is, this is Chelsea Fagan from The Financial Diet. Tell them all the wonderful things you do. I'm Chelsea Fagan. I am. She's very smart. Well, <laughs> within reason. Yes. I fall on a bell curve. Um, <laughs> I uh, am a writer. I'm the founder of a media company called The Financial Diet. Uh, we're actually in our offices here in Manhattan. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Very excited to have Katie here. Uh, we also make a YouTube channel uh, as part of what we do called The Financial Diet. Uh, and I'm someone who loves talking about money because it used to be a very taboo subject for me and now it is not. Yeah, we were just joking before we started filming that we both live in like taboo stigmatized areas and I love it because we have to talk about it, right? We do. So today, we are here to talk about how to change our relationship with money. Mm. In our previous video, if you haven't watched it, I'll link it in the description, we talk about emotional spending. What is it? Why do we do it? But now I'd like to roll into, because you know I love to offer tips and tools, um, how do we change that relationship so that when we are making purchases, they're good purchases. And right. nothing's 100%, I know. We're still going to impulsively buy that one thing that we probably shouldn't have. But um, yeah, so first, like, what is emotional spending again, just in case people forgot? Emotional spending is going to be any kind of spending that is more tied to a heightened emotional state than to any real need in your life or any real value in your life. And if someone's worried that they are emotionally spending, what's like your first, what's the first thing they can do? Don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, so it's it's a couple things, right? You want to look back at the purchases you've made. Uh, again, a tip I mentioned is going through your statements and highlighting every purchase you don't remember or and, that you feel bad about. And that was mind boggling. Like, it's one of those like insert emoji of because I guarantee there's a lot of them. Oh yeah, there are always a lot. I mean, of them. we have to do QuickBooks for businesses if anybody's t keeping track of their own expenses, and you have to look at it and be like, what was that, and put it in the right category. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm like, what was that? I exactly. don't really remember that. And that, I was like, wow, that's going to be like eye-opening. Totally. And you know, if you can't even remember them, that those purchases were not valuable to you. Um, yeah. Another thing is to always have something uh, at home, uh, like a little, put it in your budget, like a little uh, break glass in, in case of emergency, kind of like feel better kit that uh -huh. has all your favorite things in it. So that if you have a particularly bad day, you know you have something to go home to and you don't have to rush out and make an even worse and not budgeted for purchases. Yeah, because it's like catching you when you're in the emotional state. Exactly. Which is honestly when we make I'll be honest, that's when I make my worst decisions. When I've had like a really like shit day and everything's going wrong and then I'm like, I'm gonna do it, screw it. Totally. I'm gonna go buy the thing I want. Ugh. And lastly, uh, especially for online shopping, give yourself total permission. You say, if after 24 hours I still want this thing, I will buy it. And give that permission mm. and then wait 24 hours and nine times out of 10 you'll be like, mm, in the clear light of day, I do not need that thing. And I think something there's something big about permissions mm. because I don't know if you guys feel this way, but once I've given myself permission to purchase it, I, I like don't want it anymore. Oh, totally. Which is a very weird like thought process to be like, it's the child in me. Going back to the other video, I was talking about how childish I am about my spending sometimes. I'd be like, I want to do it, and that's why I'm going to. You know, trust me, I might know better. I don't do better. Um, but I think that I definitely, once I say like, yeah, if you want it, just do it. Just buy it or whatever. Or right. I'll talk to Sean and he'll be like, yeah, if you want that jacket, just get it. And then I'll be like, I don't really want it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> if it's really valuable to you, you should give yourself permission to buy it. But you need a clear mind to decide what is actually valuable to you. Yeah. So it's like take a beat. <sighs> give yourself permission. Think about it. Mm. And then go forth if you want. Go forth I like and that. prosper. Interesting. Okay, very cool. So this break in case of emergency, I love that idea. I kind of think of it as like a spending safety plan to kind of stop you from hurting your expenses and your budget. Um, but I'm curious, so my, when I was thinking about this video, my first thought was like, we're going to have to budget. And then I was like, I don't want to budget. How, how do you recommend people start that because I definitely have a roadblock where I'm like that sounds scary and overwhelming and where do I even start? First and foremost, remember that you have a budget. You're just not tracking it. Um, mm. You already are spending in different categories at different amounts. You're just not looking directly at it because you don't want to. Because 
you probably know that you're going to find stuff in there that you don't like. Um, so yeah. that's the first step. So even if you're not setting any um, boundaries on categories, even if you're not changing anything, start by actually analyzing how you are spending. I used, um, when I first started, an app called Mint because it does it all for you. I looked into that. Was it helpful? So helpful. Okay. It just it creates every month like a little pie chart of like, this is what you're spending on this. This is what is the normal spend. This is, you know, you went crazy in this this month. Uh, mm. It'll even send you alerts for when you're going over a certain amount in a oh, category. That's nice. It okay. really, I'm someone who was very reticent to, to do that manually and that really helped, but you can also do it using Excel or whatever is natural to you. But don't, for the first month, even worry about changing your habits or setting limits. Just for the first month, commit to knowing what you are currently spending. Mm. Then, once you look at it, I find, I, so it, I'm sure that there is psychological data to back this up, but I always find that the second you are actually looking at the numbers, you are going to be infinitely more motivated to have control over them. Because yes. it's so much easier to justify reckless spending when you're not keeping track of what that actually entails. And you're not keeping track of what that means in terms of your savings or what that means in terms of your goals. So as soon as you get track of those numbers, I find that you probably won't even need a nudge into the next step. Yeah. But if you do, the next step is then just to deciding like you should have at least one or two categories where you're like, woof, do I really need to be spending that amount of money? <laughs> yeah. um, and starting to work backwards from there and seeing where you can cut out and start to set little challenges for yourself. Like I want to save 5% more this, this month, or mm. I want to spend 10% less in this category. So it's more, it's attainable. I like that. It's almost like, and I, I think it's because I know therapy realm. So I like try to apply it to what I already do is like, we can't, when I tell people to like try to change the way they talk to themselves about mm themselves um, is like you have to track it first you can't totally. change what you don't know so if we haven't paid attention to what we're spending we're gonna have to just at least be aware before we can even consider making changes because how do we even know where we're at like if you ask me today like how much do I think I spend each month on eating out which I love I'd have no idea but once I'm able to like see that tangible and be like ooh. Ooh, I like that woof. I shouldn't be saying yeah. that much money It's true. <laughs> you really need to confront yourself with your own habits, and it's very easy to ignore. Um, mm -hmm. It's also very easy to ignore if you're doing just like, you know, profit and loss, essentially. If you're just like, I took in this much, I saved that much. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's mixing everything into one bucket, and therefore less... Uh, insightful to, uh, to, 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 to taking action in individual categories where you actually could make a huge difference. Um, another thing to remember, a lot of times people look at a budget as restriction. It is That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> it is important to remember that it is the opposite of restriction in the sense that you are giving yourself permission to save more. You are giving yourself the tools needed to save more. That money is still yours. In mm. fact, it's more yours than if you were giving it to a bunch of stores or whatever. True. Um, True. So, one of the things that I think helps people um, psychologically the most in, in, in making a budget is having at least one goal that feels really exciting to you. Mm. Your emergency fund, which is going to be about three months of total living expenses that okay. you have in an easily accessible bank account um, for in case of emergency, yeah. get laid off, your car breaks down, whatever it may be. That's the most important savings goal. It's the most uh, fundamental to day-to-day -to -day adult life, but it's not the most fun one. So if you add yeah. on savings goals, um, at least one that is something exciting to you, like maybe a big trip trip in the future or a new big thing that you've been looking to add to your life, um, that is going to help really reframe in your mind what savings means and what it means to have $30 more in your account because you spent $30 less on takeout. It means yeah. I'm that much closer to this thing that is meaningful to me. Um, if you don't have anything really meaningful that you're saving for and like it or not, uh, once you get really into saving, something like retirement can feel very exciting and very validating, but for most people, it's not gonna be the thing that really gets them to make good choices. So you wanna make sure you have at least one savings Goal that really feels exciting. Yeah, and that makes sense. It's like what brings you joy? What's going to motivate you? Because mm. there are going to be days when we have that emotional spend urge. Right. And if we have another goal that we're like, you know what? I know this will pass. I really want to take that trip to Europe or whatever, or visit my mom. I haven't seen her. In a while. I don't know. Whatever it could be, um, or buy that sweater I've been looking for, looking forward to. Um, that'll keep you going in those moments. And I think that was one of the like when I was thinking about emotional spending in particular. The therapist to me was like, you're gonna to have to have some coping skills mm -hmm. so that when the urge to spend, maybe when we don't want to, or that like, I can do it, or whatever it is that triggers you, figuring out what triggers you and triggers that spending that you immediately wish you hadn't done, um, 
having some different ways to cope with how you feel instead of spending. Absolutely. Like something, yeah, yeah. something I think that also gives people a lot of energy towards spending better and being more conscientious with their money is tracking their net worth. Um, mm. A lot of people, uh, this can be uh, tough for a lot of people initially because a lot of people carry a lot of debt, which means that their net worth may be negative. Yeah, because my student loans like could pull me right Many, into the many red. people, many millennials in particular, have more debt than, uh, than assets. Um, but the net worth number, which is basically just what you have minus what you owe, essentially, mm -hmm. um, that number can be incredibly motivating because it's a tangible overall number that gives a very clear snapshot of your financial health and is something very, very um, tangible to build. Every time you save an extra $100, your net worth increases by $100. Yeah. When you start investing, uh, when you start having a stronger portfolio, when you let that investment horizon take its course and you start to have that, um, that compound interest playing mm -hmm. into it, you get to look at it as much as you want and say, look where I am versus where I was a year ago. And when you use programs, especially that will help like chart it on an actual chart, like my husband and I, when we look at our net worth, it's like, ooh, we moved to America. Ooh, we got a new apartment. <laughs> and then it's like, ooh, uh, Chelsea's company started making money. And, it's, yeah. and you get to really track um, a very macro picture of the decisions and the life that you're, that you're building but you also get to look at it in individual numbers, which is incredibly satisfying. Yeah, and I think also like, I don't know if you think this weighs into it too, but some, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong in those comments, but I think that sometimes we have this like roadblock of success financially where, cause I'll hear from a lot of my viewers that like they self-sabotage. So mm. they'll see it like going well, like, ooh, things are increasing. Chelsea's company's finally making money and we're doing well. And you mm -hmm. see it like bump, 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 bump. And then you're like, and I make a really bad choice because I feel like I'm not worth it. Is that common too or am I just like making things up? I would say that probably what is very common with people and I'm susceptible to this as well is that people get uh, too comfortable and mm. they feel like either I can afford to be irresponsible for a while um, or mm -hmm. uh, they feel like I've been so good, I should really reward myself. And their definition of reward oh. is oh, it's like crazy. Is spending too much money? Because I was um, like, I do the reward. I'll be like, I did really good today, and I'll go go out to a nice meal or something, or and buy that's, something. And I mean, that's I know something it's more that can be manageable. <laughs> that can be manageable, but for a lot of people, it might be something that really does derail their progress. You mm -hmm. know, they might be like, oh, I've paid so much on my student loans, like screw it, I'm gonna take this you know, luxury trip to, to go visit a friend or whatever it might be. Um, and if it's something that you've budgeted for and that you can afford, sure, why not? But it's kind of like, um, you know, people often, we call it the financial diet in a large part because the only quote unquote diet that ever works is something that you can actually do every day and mm -hmm. is part of your life. Uh, and people often have a similar relationship to food. You yes, know? I see such a correlation with that, especially eating disorders. I think I've talked about this before, but my patients who tend to be on the more restrictive side with food, restrict with money. Mm. My patients who tend to be on the more binge or purge, uh, bulimia, binge eating disorder, um, they tend to binge with money as well. Like they'll overspend all of a sudden and you know blow their budget. And it's and it's it's really difficult also if you have that tendency, which many people do with money, to mm -hmm. feel like okay, I've I, I've I've earned it or I've been so good, I can afford to to you know be bad for a while, quote unquote, hate that kind of phrasing, yeah. but I can afford to be bad. Then a lot of people get on that cycle. Well, you know, screw it. Yeah. I already, you know, didn't save anything this month. I might as well just, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. And that is the kind of thing that can derail years of work. Um, and again, a huge correlation with food, huge correlation with anything that's how we reward ourselves, mm -hmm. how we control ourselves. What are, what is the level of, um, what is the level of value that we feel uh, entitled to at any given time? The level mm. of reward, the level of indulgence, you know, yeah. it's really, really hard for people not to spiral with these things, even people who are conscientious. Yeah. And maybe that's why it's like important to, to see a budget, not as such a restriction because those of us who have that binge urge will feel immediately in this binge restrict cycle where we restrict and then we mm. do an overspend or like some kind of sabotaging behavior. It's more like, how do we um, find ways like that break in case of emergency? I love that because then that's still a little bit of a reward. So we're not mm -hmm. all or nothing. It's getting out of that black and white thinking. That's really what it is. It totally We is. have to be like, hey, okay, so I've been working really hard. And for me, I know that I need a reward to keep motivated. So I'm, 
I'm saving money towards this bigger reward, but today, instead of, um, I don't know, in, instead of eating out at this place that maybe is like only $15, I'll do the $20 place, and Absolutely. that will be a treat for me. Um, and finding those small ways to reward without sabotage. I am a Which child I, in that regard. Like I need rewards constantly. I'm like a, I'm like a dog. I'm like a Pavlov dog, <laughs> yeah, and I need, need my little treats. piece of cheese in order to keep going. <laughs> so one thing that I highly recommend for longer term goals, things like saving for retirement or building your net worth, uh, is to in your planning for these things build in prizes. You know, Ooh, build in things like to that budget that once you hit that, you can go. You Let's say you pay off one of your student loans. You have already built into that, that I have budgeted $500 after that to take a trip to go visit my friend. Mm. You know, yeah. Or it, it, I've, I've got my net worth up to $100,000. With that, I get to redecorate an entire room in my house that I've been Ooh. meaning to redo. Whatever it is. Yes. Um, but make sure that it is something that you are planning for and is part of the deal. That it's not just about uh, the saving, that it's also about how you celebrate that. Because mm -hmm. one thing that I like to rem remind myself of is that you could get hit by a bus tomorrow like you could and a lot of people who get very into money and savings become extremely they get kind of almost like a hoarder mentality about yeah. money and they delay 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 because they want to see that number go up they want to retire at a when do you age. enjoy it when do you enjoy it you know yeah. i believe in distributing that joy and that value throughout your life because again you don't know how long you're going to be here and you can't take it with you my, you my take mom's you. dad my grandpa on my mom's side was like that where he just saved and saved and saved and saved for, for and nothing. And then he died. He did. He oh God, that was bleak. I'm sorry. No, but he did. It was like when I was in college, he passed away and he never like treated himself. Mm. And it was just crazy to me um, because I thought, what did you save all that for? Like, not that you should spend everything so you're left with nothing, but like there's a nice way to have rewards built in. And I think that that is something that, that is important for me too. Cause I'm, I'm like that. I need a little treat to keep me going. Um, so yeah, okay, those are all helpful tips and that's a lot of like, a lot of money, I don't know, like food for thoughts. I can't, I've got to workshop that. I can't come up with a way to weave in money for food for thought, but it's a lot to digest. Mm. Um, if you could go back in time and give 20 year old you advice or 18 year old you, what would be that advice that you'd give to her then? Because I know we have a lot of people out there who maybe are in that stage where maybe they grew up with not as, not enough or not as much or are making bad choices like what would you tell that you back then that you think would be the most helpful well if it's any consolation to the viewers wherever you are financially at 20 i guarantee you you are better than i was at that age i did every terrible thing you could possibly do with money in terms of getting myself into debt, going to collections. I got arrested um, for related to money issues, uh, unpaid moving violations. Oh. They suspended my tags and my license and then I was driving on it. Um, I ruined my credit score. I got into consumer debt. Basically every bad decision I made and all of that was happening for what I consider to be the most petty reason, which was just wanting a better life, feeling entitled to a better mm -hmm. life. And I defined that in really dumb teenage terms, which was having nice things, going out when I wanted to, all of that stuff. And I would tell that person, um, first of all, I would be like, so you need to be like locked in a basement <laughs> and not allowed to access credit cards or anything. Um, but functionally, what I would tell her is that um, what you define as a good life is completely ephemeral. It's completely based in temporary and fleeting joys that have no real value. What is a good life, what will feel, what you want to feel, what you mistake for being rich. You think being rich is just it's buying things. a bunch of shit. Being rich is not having to worry at night because you know that you will be okay, that you know you can afford mistakes. You know that like if you get a ticket, you can pay it and it won't go to collections and spiral out of control. It means if someone in your family needs help, you can fly out to see them. Yeah. It means you could even loan money to someone if they needed it. It is a feeling of being, um, it's a feeling of security. That's, that's really what you're after and you'll never ever get it this way. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think that like uh, buying goods only, it, it's, it's just a thing. Mm. It's like one of my um, 
one of my friends who has children, she says that she doesn't like to buy them things. She likes to buy them experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's more about like spending time together, doing something cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I think putting more of our energy behind experiences and shared things with people that we care about is, is really where it's at. And that I can't, yeah, being secure. It's that security. It is. And don't get me wrong. Like yeah. I love things. We all I, do. I love, like I love my, my home is like my favorite thing in the world. I love decorating it and thinking about it and being in it and hosting people at it. I love it. But if, if that love cost me the ability to be able to pay like a medical bill yeah. or, you know, be able to visit my family or whatever other things that basic security provides, it would ruin all of that pleasure because it's mm. built on sand. Yeah. No, it's so true. Thank you for sharing all of your tips. And I hope Thank that you, you for found, having me. You, I hope you found this like helpful and validating to know that you're not alone. Like we all make poor money decisions. I think the more that we talk about it, the more we understand it, um, the better we can all be. I agree. And it's great that channels like Chelsea's exist and she offers all sorts of wonderful tips and tricks and just such useful information. So I will link her channel and everything down in the description. Like I said, we answered a lot of your questions over on her channel already. So you can go over there and see us, you know, doing our best to help you out too. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Love to be here. Yeah. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.